Hey guys, welcome back to Walt.com. So today we're gonna to be doing some upside down flat, also known as overhead uh, or 4G, overhead groove weld. Uh, the plates were sent to us by Stephen Marshall, so thanks for sending them to us. We're gonna go ahead and show the root, all the inner passes that go in here, put the cap on, try to maintain our cap below 3 16 of an inch because once we get into the, uh, the thicker material, one inch and above, we're allowed a little bit more weld reinforcement. Once we get done with this, we're gonna go ahead and do two side bend tests. So if you're not familiar with a side bend, stick around. Also, you can check out our 3G version of this uh, that, was, that was put out previously. I'm gonna be running the ESOB Rebel 285, running about 122 amps on reverse polarity. I'm gonna use some Bowler Fox EV50 7018 rods. Let's go ahead and run the route. All right, so for joint preparation, we went ahead. We have both the plates are beveled at 22 and a half degrees for an included angle of 45 degrees. We have a quarter inch root opening and I took all the mill scale off the, the front and the back. Our backing strip is quarter inch by one inch plate. And then we have these little runoff tabs. There's just additional quarter inch plate so that we can make sure that we have uh, ample root re or weld reinforcement once we get to the top and we don't have any sloping areas in here. Same thing with the run on tab. Uh, we have enough to get us going up in there, up and there. All right, so let's talk technique. So for the root and hot pass, and then pretty much all the subsequent passes, I'm gonna make slight variations. But for the root and the hot pass, I'm gonna try to maintain a five to 10 degree work angle or travel angle as I'm going through here. I'm kind of bouncing off the sides of the, uh, the, the bevels just to make sure I get a good tie in. Hold the sides, kind of go quick through the center. It's gonna take care of itself. You wanna maintain a very tight arc length uh, and it's gonna make you, it's gonna make a much flatter weld for you. So as you're coming through here, nice, slow, steady travel speed. I like to get out from underneath of it. I know a lot of people who like to get right up underneath here and weld, and that's when you start catching fire all over your body and stuff. So I like to get out from underneath of it, so that way if anything falls, it's hitting the ground, not me. It's not gonna interrupt my weld, and I don't have to continue my weld with a bunch of molten metal right there in my forearm. Keep that, keep that angle back. A lot of people have a tendency that as they're coming through, they start to rotate their wrist, and now we're changing our travel angle to a push angle, right? So try to just be mentally uh, aware of where that electro aid, or electrode is at all times. Make sure you maintain that five to 10 degree travel angle. Work back and forth, watch the sides. Utilize that run on and run off tab. Those are, those are gonna help us once again so that we don't have a low profile once we get to our, our reinforcement on the top. Remember, we're laying the foundation for that final weld. I know I say that a lot in these videos, but uh, that's a point that you, we really have to drive home so you guys understand that. We're laying the groundwork as we go through here. Uh, let's go ahead and put in the hot pass. It's gonna be the same technique. Nice tight arc length, five to 10 degree travel angle. A Little bit of side to side oscillation. Remember, I'm putting a stringer in here, not a weave. And the cool thing about overhead is I can run multi-directional, whereas with vertical, I can only have a vertical progression if that's what is written in the welding procedure specification. But this, it doesn't matter. I can go left to right, right to left, front to back, back to front, whichever way you want to get in there. So like, once these welds start getting All a little right. bit further out, I have the option to come over here and weld from my left to right, and then hop over here and do the same thing and go the opposite direction. So there's really no set start and end point on this. I can alternate back and forth between the two. Use that to your advantage. A lot of times if you just start on one end, you're gonna have low spots over here, and by the time you finish, you're gonna have high spots. We can kind of mitigate that by changing the direction if we need to and going opposite sides and welding those in. We're still gonna keep the, the same bead sequence. So if I start a weld over here on my left, uh, I'm gonna finish that, that weld sequence. If I start one over here on the right, I'm gonna finish it that way as well. Remember, I'm not gonna weld, uh, I'm not gonna put one on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle. Whichever direction I start with, I'm just gonna keep carrying over until I hit the other face of this bevel. Again, this stuff can't be too clean. Once again, we don't wanna trap slag in here. Don't be afraid to do your tie in so practice your tie ins What I like to do is just get a flat piece of uh, plate and just practice tie-ins and my overhead welds getting into a comfortable position before you get into groove welding. All right, so with the, uh, the tie-in, 
I'm gonna do the same thing I did in vertical, same thing I do in flat and horizontal. I'm gonna start just above or ahead of that crater, about three eighths of an inch, strike, go back, make a little J movement, and then just kind of carry on like I never stop. I'm gonna use both hands to get it going because I want pretty good accuracy as to where that where I'm gonna light that electrode off. I'll get maybe an inch into it and then I'll just slowly start getting this hand out of the way. And then just finish that off like I never stopped. Remember, run all the way off onto these runoff tabs. They're gonna help later on make sure that we don't fall short from our weld reinforcement. All right, so the hot pass went in pretty good. I got even tie-in on the sides here. That's exactly what I was looking for. Good penetration up into my root weld. Going in next, I'm going to weld a pass on my left as I'm looking down this way. I'm gonna put one on the left and then one on the right. Now we have to be careful because if I start at the same time with the same rod, I'm going to end up performing all my starts and stops in the same spot. So I'm gonna to try to avoid that. The, uh, the start and stop I did on my route was about dead center. The start and stop that I did with my hot pass was about three quarters of the way down. Uh, this one I'm probably gonna run about a third of the way and then I'll just do a tie in down here and then I'll see what I come up with on the fourth one. I just don't want them all to be in the same spot everywhere on the plate. We could start getting uh, thicker areas if we end up experiencing any cold lap. Uh, so I wanna avoid that and then you just don't want all your starts and stops in the same spot because you know we're gonna test this. Uh, so try to stagger those out just like any other process. Uh, so yep, two more passes in here. Uh, I anticipate 35 to 40 passes in this whole plate. Overhead lays a little bit flatter than uh, vertical. And I wanna say with the vertical, we put in uh, 29 passes. I think I'm, I'm probably gonna put a few more in the, uh, in the overhead. Let's go ahead and get to the uh, first set of inner passes. All right, so my objective with this pass is to tie into the bevel face and cover up 50% of that hot pass. Likewise, once I get done with that, I'm gonna cover up half of that weld. The other half is going to be on the bevel face. So once I get done, both welds are tying into uh, opposite sides of the bevel, and then they're gonna meet halfway in the middle. All right, so once again, make sure everything's nice and clean, get you a little inspection flashlight, get all that slag trapped out of there. Uh, I failed to mention in the beginning, we're running this to D11 and D15 standards, very similar to what we did with the 3G. So the only tools that I have to do interpass cleaning is my chipping hammer and wire brush. So I'm not allowed to use uh, a power wheel, I'm not allowed to use a uh, grinder, anything that's gonna remove material or metal. I can't use chisels, chip and hammer, or, uh, chisels and hammers, files, none of that. It's a weld test, not a grind test. So it's, we're just judging the, the ability to put in the appropriate amount of welds and then pass visual inspection. Once we pass visual, we'll be able to cut it open and do two side bends after, uh, after it's prepped to specs. So with that pass in over here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the one in on the right hand side. Again, with this pass, I'm gonna be tying into the, uh, the face of this bevel over here and then covering up 50% of the weld that I just put down. My method of attack with this one is I'm probably gonna go as far, I, as far as I can with this electrode and then just see where I have to do a termination so I can do a start and stop. But pretty much every pass that I'm gonna lay in here, I may have to do a start and stop. So once, once again, practice those starts and stops. A lot of people get really good at running six inch passes, um, but if you have to go seven, eight or nine, they, they start getting all squirrely because they didn't practice their tie-in. So that's a, that's a big thing to practice. All right, so we got the, uh, our first row of inner passes in. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue that sequence, that profile, welding from one side of the, uh, the bevel face to the other in that order. So this next run, I'll probably put three passes in, then four, then five. Each course usually adds about one additional weld in there. We'll just kind of see what we have space for. But now I'm just gonna go through and start putting some of these in. I'll probably put three more welds in and then I'm gonna let this plate cool for a couple of minutes, make sure everything's nice and clean, and then go back and then just keep laying, uh, laying course after course in here. All 
All right, so I am right at flush, but I want to bring, uh, I want a little, I want to add a little reinforcement to it. So for the most part, everything's flush. I've got a few low spots just on the ends where my bevel used to be. Uh, so that's where I'm going to aim for my cap. So I'm allowed to have up to 3 16 of an inch weld reinforcement on the one inch plate. I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to lay it in there nice and tight, try to maintain a nice flat bead profile, just a slow steady pull. The bevel is where I'm going to, or what's left of the bevel, is where I'm going to point the center of my electrode. I'm going to put half of the weld on one side of that bevel, half uh, to where all the welds are. I'm anticipating probably about five to seven passes on the cap. I'll do the same thing once I get to the far right hand side where that other uh, edge of that bevel used to be, or is right now. I'm going to go ahead and melt through that. 50% of my, uh, my weld pass is going to be on the other side of that bevel. All right, so we're done with the cap passes. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down. What I want is at least flush at a minimum, no higher than 3 16 of an inch, which I think we got. Everything looks clean, looks smooth. Everything went in fine. We got 35 passes in this bad boy. Let's go ahead and take it down. All right, so the old man still got it. Uh, everything's above flush, but no more than 3 16 of an inch. Looks good. We'll go ahead and lay it out for cut and clean it up, take it over to the bender, see how we did. So we have our two coupons set up, uh, the two strips that we pulled out of the one inch plate to do the side bend. We are three eighths thick and one inch wide. We have to do two side bends to be able to pass the test. Uh, it doesn't matter which way they are bent. Uh, so you can lay it whichever side, doesn't matter. Go ahead and put it in the heartbreaker and let her eat. Oh no! She's clean. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got it every time I step up in the building. Everybody hands go up. So you can see with the side bend, the roots down here, the face is up here. You can see where everything ties in right here along the sides. No indications. We're clear. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something along the way. It's been a while since I've run this test, but just practice some of the things I showed in the video, and you too can pass this test. It's a lot of passes. I think we ended up with, what, 32? 35 passes in here, so about five passes short than I anticipated, but I said about, I think I said 35 to 40, so it's roughly in there. Um, it's a lot of passes, but just lay them in there nice and easy, keep them straight, keep them flat, and you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section. Video requests you can submit to weld.com uh, on the website and or you can just drop them down in the comment section. Appreciate you watching. Till next time, make it well better than your last.